The Battle of Calabria, known to the Italian navy as the Battle of Puntastilo, was a naval battle during the Battle of the Mediterranean in the Second World War. Ships of the Italian Regia Marina were opposed by vessels of the British Royal Navy and Royal Australian Navy. The battle occurred 30 miles to the east of Puntastilo, Calabria, on 9 July 1940. It was one of the few pitched battles of the Mediterranean campaign during the Second World War involving large numbers of ships on both sides. Both sides claimed victory but in fact the battle was a draw and everyone returned to their bases safely. Chapter 1 – Background When Italy entered the Second World War, its forces in Libya were ill-equipped for offensive operations, and the Italian fleet was forced to start large supply convoys in order to bring them up to fighting condition. On 6 July a convoy of four merchant ships left Naples on their way to Benghazi, while attempting to fool the Allies into thinking they were making for Tripoli. That evening two torpedo boats from Catania and another freighter met them off Messina, and the next day their escort force joined the convoy from Taranto after being informed that the Allies had recently left port in Alexandria. The transports carried 2,190 troops, 72 M11 tanks, 232 vehicles, 10,445 tons of supplies and 5,720 tons of fuel. The convoy's escort, commanded by Admiral Inigo Campioni, consisted of three groups. The first, comprising eight destroyers and four torpedo boats, sailed directly protecting the cargo ships. A second group sailed 35 miles to the east consisting of six heavy cruisers and another four destroyers. Finally, the main battle group consisted of two battleships, eight light cruisers and another 16 destroyers. A substantial number of the Italian destroyers didn't take part in the battle due to mechanical problems and the need to refuel. Meanwhile, the Allies were involved in a similar convoy action. The fleet sailed from Alexandria bound towards Malta where the destroyers would deliver supplies and a limited number of specialist reinforcements. Two convoys were arranged to take off fleet stores and civilians from Malta to Alexandria. Two groups of merchantmen sailed, a fast convoy at 13 knots and slow one at 9 knots. Protecting them were three groups of ships, Force A, with five cruisers and a destroyer, Force B, with the battleship Warspite and five destroyers, and Force C, the main battle group, with the battleships Royal Sovereign and Malaya, the aircraft carrier Eagle and eleven destroyers. One of them, Imperial, had to return to Alexandria with a burst steam pipe on the early hours of the 8th of July. All were under the direction of Admiral Andrew Cunningham. At 1440 on the 8th of July two Italian Kant Z.506 seaplanes from Tobruk spotted the British fleet and shadowed it for nearly four hours. Admiral Campioni ordered his fleet to defend the convoy by turning eastward and preparing for action. The Italian Supreme Command, however, was reluctant to risk its warships in a nighttime encounter, and they ordered the fleet to avoid contact. During the initial positioning the Italians suffered technical problems on three destroyers and two light cruisers, so these ships, with several additional destroyers, were detached to refuel in Sicily. In order to make up for these losses, another destroyer group was summoned from Taranto. At this point, the Italian fleet, had 16 destroyers. Meanwhile, the Allies were having problems as well. From 10 o'clock to 18.40, 72 land based bombers of the Italian Regia Aeronautica from the mainland attacked their fleet. Unlike the dive bombers favored by the Germans, Italian bombers operated in formations at high altitudes during the early stages of the war, about 12,000 feet. While scores of bombs were dropped by the Italians, a single hit on HMS Gloucester represented the outcome of two major attacks. This was a serious hit on the bridge, killing the captain, six officers and eleven ratings. In addition, three officers and six ratings were wounded. The forward fire control and the steering equipment was destroyed, and for the rest of the battle, she would be commanded from the emergency station. At 1510 on 8 July, Cunningham's fleet steamed toward Taranto, in order to cut the Italians' return route. 
At dusk, Cunningham changed course from 310 degrees to 260 degrees and slowed the fleet speed. During the first hours of the 9th of July, they took a 305 degrees course, to avoid the Italian air reconnaissance while keeping their fleet between the Italian squadron, and the Gulf of Taranto. By 12.30, the Italian Supreme Command was unaware of the situation of the British fleet. Campioni told his fleet to scramble by 1400 hours about 60 miles southeast of Cape Spartivento in search of the enemy. Campioni eventually received reports of the British position at 13.30, and six row.43 floatplanes launched shortly after by the Italian cruisers spotted the British warships 30 miles closer than supposed. By late evening of 8 July, the Italian convoy had arrived in Bengorzi unscathed. Chapter 2 Battle. Chapter 2 Section 1 Cruiser Engagement. At noon on 9 July, the two fleets were 90 miles apart. Vice Admiral Cunningham could not close the distance to engage with the significantly slower Royal Sovereign and Malaya versus 28 knots, and took war spite in on its own. Meanwhile, at 1315, Eagle launched several unsuccessful sorties by ferry swordfish against the Italian heavy cruisers, which they took for battleships. At 1310, the Italian Supreme Command had instructed Campioni to engage one of the two enemy forces facing him, but in fact they had planned to keep the action close to Italy and were deliberately moving north in order to draw the Allies closer to their air bases. By 1400 hours, however, Cunningham's plans to cut off the Italian fleet from Taranto, had succeeded. The Allied cruiser group was spread out in front of Warspite, and at 1515 they caught sight of the Italian main battle force and the two groups opened fire at 21,500 meters. Italian range finding was better than the Allied, and within three minutes they had found the distance even though they were firing at extreme range. Although the Allies' range finding was not as good and they had trouble with their rounds falling short, the Allied gun laying was better and they were able to place their rounds in much tighter groups. Generally the gunnery of the two forces was fairly well matched. After only a few minutes the range was down to 20,000 meters and the Allied guns became useful. However, by 1522, the Italian fire came dangerously close to the Allied cruisers and Vice Admiral John Tovey decided to disengage. At this point splinters from a 6-inch shell fired by the cruiser Giuseppe Garibaldi hit HMS Neptune, damaging her catapult and the reconnaissance aircraft beyond repair. The cruisers continued to open the range and by 1530 fire ceased. Chapter 2 Section 2 Battleship Engagement One group of Italian light cruisers, mistaken for the heavy cruisers of the Zara class, was on the Allied side of the battle line and was soon within range of the charging war spite. Once again the Allied rounds fell short, and neither of her targets, Alberico de Barbiano and Alberto di Giussano, received any damage in the initial salvos. However, by this time war spite was also out of position, and she circled in place in order to allow Malaya to catch up. Meanwhile, Royal Sovereign was still well to the rear. The Italian commander decided to take on war spite, and started moving his two battleships into position. At 1552, Giulio Cesare opened fire at a range of 26,400 meters. Conti di Cavour held her fire, as Italian doctrine was for battleships to fight one on one. It had been discovered during the Battle of Jutland that more than one ship firing at a single target made it very difficult for the range-finding parties to tell which rounds were fired by their ship. Conti di Cavour had been assigned to Malaya and Royal Sovereign, which did not enter the engagement. War spite, not aware of the Italian firing patterns, split her guns between the two ships. During the exchange one of Giulio Cesare's rounds fell long and caused splinter damage to Warspikes escorting destroyers Harewood and Decoy, which had formed up on the far side of the action. At 1554 Malaya started firing, well out of range, hoping to cause some confusion on the Italian ships. Meanwhile, the Italian heavy cruisers came into action and started firing on war spite at 1555 but had to break off as the Allied cruisers returned. At 1559 two shells from Giulio Cesare fell very close to war spite. 
Almost immediately after one of Warspite's 15-inch rounds hit the rear deck of Giulio Cesare, exploding in the funnel, and setting off the stored ammunition for one of her 37mm anti-aircraft guns. Two seamen were killed and several wounded. The fumes from the burning ammunition were sucked down into the engine room, which had to evacuate, and shut down half of the boilers. Giulio Cesare's speed quickly fell off to 18 knots and Conti di Cavour took over. Giulio Cesare and Warspite were well over 24,000 meters apart at the time of the hit, which was one of the longest-range naval artillery hits in history. It would appear that Warspite was in an excellent position to deal some serious blows to the slowing Giulio Cesare, but she once again executed another tight turn to allow Malaya to catch up. With her guns suddenly silenced during the turn, rangefinders on Malaya discovered what the Italians had been intending to avoid, that her rounds were falling 2,500 meters short of Giulio Cesare and they had been watching Warspite's rounds not their own. At 1601 the Italian destroyers generated smoke and the battleships got under cover. There is some debate about this point today, the Allied position being that the battleships were leaving battle, the Italian that they were attempting to make a torpedo attack with their destroyers from within the smoke. Chapter 2 Section 3 Final Actions At 1558 Fiume reopened fire on her counterpart in the Allied line, Liverpool, and soon two groups of Italian cruisers entered combat range with the main Allied cruiser battle group. Firing continued as both groups attempted to form up and at 1607 Bolzano, was hit three times by six in shells from HMS Neptune, temporarily locking her rudder and causing two fatalities in the torpedo room. A near miss on the destroyer Vittorio Alfieri caused minor damage. Meanwhile, Mechanics on Giulio Cesare were able to repair two of the four damaged boilers, allowing the battleship to reach 22 knots. Admiral Campioni, considering the possibility of his remaining battleship, Conti di Cavour, having to face three enemy battleships and an aircraft carrier, decided to withdraw the battleships towards Messina. Giulio Cesare was out of action for 30 days. Over the next hour, both fleets attempted to make long range torpedo runs with their destroyer groups, without success. At 1640, the Italian Air Force made an attack with 126 aircraft, reporting damage on Eagle, Warspite, and Malaya. Because of some misunderstanding, 50 of the Italian aircraft also attacked the Italian ships, without damage. The battle ended at 1650 with both sides withdrawing. One final victim was the destroyer Leone Pancaldo, sent to Augusta in Sicily, which was hit by a torpedo launched from a swordfish at 940 the next day and sank in shallow water. She was refloated and returned to service in December 1941. Chapter 3 Aftermath After the battle, both fleets turned for home. This allowed the Italians to claim a victory of sorts, as their cargo ships were already past the action by this time and sailed safely for Libya. Meanwhile, the Allied ships also reached Alexandria along with their escort. Although the battle was indecisive, Allied sources claimed that the Royal Navy asserted an important moral ascendancy over their Italian counterpart. Other sources instead dispute those claims, pointing out that, in the immediate aftermath of the battle, the moods of the two commanders were quite different. Campioni wrote that, even having been able to employ only two old refurbished battleships, the battle gave to every man in the fleet, from the senior officers to the seamen, the impression of being able to cope with the British fleet on equal terms. Cunningham, conversely, was dismayed by the performance of his two older units, whose lack of speed permitted the Italians to dictate the course of the action, and whose cannon were outranged not only by those of the two Italian battleships, but by those of the heavy cruisers as well. Cunningham dismissed the royal sovereign as a constant source of anxiety, and asked the Admiralty for two or three more Queen Elizabeth-class battleships, possibly equipped with radar, a new carrier with an armoured deck, the heavy cruisers York and Exeter, and enough smaller ships to cover the major units. One question is why the Italians did not send their two operational battleships of Vittorio Veneto class at Taranto, both almost ready for action, and only a few hours from the scene. Both capital ships were still undergoing trials, and Litterio had suffered an electrical mishap on one of her main turrets. 
Litterio and Vittorio Veneto would have tipped the balance of fire well onto the Italian side but even without these ships the fleets were fairly even. Despite Italian superiority in aircraft, due to the nearby land-based aircraft of the Regia Aeronautica the attacks proved ineffective, achieving little apart from the damage to Gloucester. Despite this, the air arms battle reports were inflated to the point of claiming damage to half of the Allied fleet. Overall, Allied gunnery proved superior, while the Italian salvos were too widely dispersed due to technical reasons that were not to be overcome until the end of the conflict. Chapter 4 Order of Battle Denotes Flagship Chapter 4 Section 1 Allies Force A, commanded by Vice Admiral John Tovey. 7th Cruiser Squadron. 5 Light Cruisers, Orion, Neptune, HMAS Sydney, Gloucester, and Liverpool. Force B, commanded by Vice Admiral Andrew Cunningham who was the Commander-in-Chief Mediterranean Fleet. 1st Battle Squadron. 1 Battleship, War Spite. 6 Destroyers, Nubian, Mohawk, Hero, Hareward, Decoy, HMAS Stewart, Force C, commanded by Vice Admiral Sir Henry Pridham Whipple. First Battle Squadron. Two battleships, Malaya, and Royal Sovereign. One aircraft carrier, Eagle. Ten destroyers, Hyperion, Hostile, Hasty, Ilex, Dainty, Defender, Juno, Janus, HMAS Vampire, and HMAS Voyager. The destroyer HMS escort was sunk in the western Mediterranean where Force H was providing a feint and demonstration against Sardinia to distract the Italian fleet from the sailing of the Allied convoys. She was torpedoed on the 11th of July by the Italian submarine Guglielmo Marconi during Force H's return passage. Chapter 4 Section 2 Regia Marina Italian force commanded by Vice Admiral Inigo Campioni. Pola. Convoy Close Escort. Second Light Cruiser Division. Vice Admiral Ferdinando Cassidy, Division Commander. Giovanni del Band Nere. Bartolomeo Coleoni 10 TH Destroyer Squadron. Maestral. Libecchio. Gricole. Sirocco 14 TH Destroyer Squadron. Ugolino Vivaldi. Antonio Donnelli. Leon Pancaldo. Luca Tarrago Torpedo Boats, Rosalino Pilo, Giuseppe Missori. First Squadron. Admiral Angelo Iashino, Commander. Fifth Battleship Division. Admiral Bruto Brivanese, Division Commander. Giulio Cesare. Conti di Cavour 4th Cruiser Division. Vice Admiral Alberto Marenco di Moriando, Division Commander. Alberico de Barbiano. Alberto di Giussano. Luigi Cadorna. Armando Diaz 8th Teach Cruiser Division. Vice Admiral Antonio Lignani, Division Commander. Luigi di Savoia Duca di Abruzzi. Giuseppe Garibaldi. 7th Destroyer Squadron. Fretcher. Setta. Dardo. Strahl 8th Destroyer Squadron. Folgari. Fulmine. Baleno. Lampo 15th Destroyer Squadron. Antonio Pigafetta. Niccolo Zeno. Alvis de Morsto. Giovanni de Verizzano. Lanzarotto Malocello 16th Destroyer Squadron. Nicoloso de Recco. Antoniotto U. Sodimare. Luca Tarrigo. Emanuele Pesigno. Antoniotto U. Sodimare 2 ND Squadron. Commander. 1st Cruiser Division. Vice Admiral Pellegrino Matteucci, Division Commander. Zara. Gorizia. Fiume 3rd Cruiser Division. Vice Admiral Carlo Cataneo, 
Division Commander. Pola. Trento. Triesa. Bolzano 7th Cruiser Division. Vice Admiral Luigi Sonsonetti, Division Commander. Emanuele Filiberto Duca d'Aosta. Muzio Tendolo. Romando Monte Cuccoli. Eugenio di Savoia 9th Destroyer Squadron. Vittorio Alfieri. Alfredo Oriani. Giorgio Carducci. Vincenzo Gioberti 11th Destroyer Squadron. Artillere. Camicia Nera. Aviere. Genier 12th Destroyer Squadron. Lanciere. Carabinier. Carazia. Ascari. Chapter 5, Sources. Green, Jack, and Massinani, Alessandro. The Naval War in the Mediterranean, 1940-1943, Chatham Publishing, London. ISBN 1-885-1961-5. Jordan, John. Warship, 2008. Conway Maritime Press, p. 34. ISBN 184486-0620. Miller, Nathan, War at Sea, A Naval History of World War II, Oxford University Press, Oxford, 1995. ISBN 0195112. O'Hara, Vincent P. Struggle for the Middle Sea, The Great Navies at War in the Mediterranean Theatre, 1940-1945. Annapolis, Maryland, Naval Institute Press. ISBN 978-159114-648-3.